Hey everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at the Hyde Motor Works Eaton M62 uh, supercharger kit for my E36 wide body BMW. Stay tuned. After months and months and months of waiting, the Hyde Motor Works Eaton M62 kit for my BMW M52B is finally here. Alright guys, before we go any further, I needed to take a chance to thank the sponsors for this build and this video, Hyde Motor Works. Hyde Motor Works is a UK company uh, building supercharger kits to bolt on superchargers onto pretty much any V6, four cylinder, V8, BMW that's out there. Whether you want to run the centripetal styles or the roots uh, screw styles like the Eaton's or the SC14's, they've got a kit for your engine more than likely. My kit is a brand new prototype kit. One of five, two in the US, only one that's going on a wide body BMW. So this is this is brand new, guys. This is we are fresh on the market with these, um, but they also make a version for the uh, Eaton 190 uh, and the Eaton 112 superchargers as well. Now, if you use those superchargers, you have to use the Hyde Motor Works all aluminum intake manifold. It's a really nice manifold. I'm probably going to pick it up anyways. Hopefully in the in the eventual future, we can go to a full S52 build. I want to build out top, bottom, head, you know, crank, piston rods, connections, everything. I would love to build out an S52 motor and then strap on like an M90 or an M112. So maybe we can do something with Hyde in the future too. But for now, they've taken great care of us. They've got us one of the first kits in the world. Um, they're helping us out with the build. There is a um, link that they'll be providing that I'll put down in the subscription. It's Ori Supercharged 100 for the next 30 days. $100 off any orders over 1000 through the website HydeMotorWorks.com. Uh, put in my link for the uh, discount code and you'll automatically get $100 off any order over 1000 USD. Now, uh, if you want reliable supercharged performance, you need to go with Hyde Motor Works. Stop by their website, check them out, see if there's anything you like, anything that you need. They provide all kinds of stuff that you need, including service, um, you know, help and, and, and uh, troubleshooting on some of this stuff, but a lot of it has been engineered perfectly. It, it bolts up, guys. As far as, you know, we're going to go through and we're going to watch this whole video and this whole build. I don't pull punches. Anything that you see that if it's going to give me difficult or it didn't line up or I have to adjust it or I have to fix it, don't get me wrong. We'll fix it. We'll make it work. You know we always do. But I'm going to let you know if the kit didn't fit, if the kit did fit. But so far from what I've seen in opening the kit, it's dialed. I mean, it is to the millimeter. It is dialed. So when we move through the video, you'll get to see like it's a really all-inclusive kit um, other than like silicone hosing. you gotta. They do have kits that they provide. Um, I got all my stuff coming from Mishimoto um, just because I have their radiator and the blue matching stuff and, and I didn't want to ship from the UK again or else I would have just gone with Hyde Motor Works for the uh, silicone um, hoses anyways. But make sure you stop by, hit their YouTube, hit the website, throw them some likes, hit the bells. You know how you guys know what to do. But uh, we'll move forward with the video. Enjoy and we will continue with the build after this. Uh, once we get the video up, we're going to start the build and start getting this thing attached. And uh, I'll try to get a video out within the next couple weeks. Make sure you've hit that subscribe button so you can see when the next video comes out. If you want to be so kind as to hit that bell and notification, it really helps out the channel. Any and all interaction that you guys provide helps with the channel. Any comments that you make, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Let me know what your build is, what you're thinking about doing. I'll let you know some of the things that I've come up with. Um, I am by no means... Uh, more than anything of a, of a, of a well-skilled amateur. So we're going to do all this together. Some of it we'll do on the sidewalk. Some of it we'll do in a shop if we can get a place to actually work on the vehicles. But we've never let it stop us before. We dropped the transmission. The entire car has been built on the curb, on the sidewalk. No garage, no lift. It's all possible. Sure, sometimes it's a little difficult, 
but it can be done. There's a where there's a will, there's a way. So without further ado, we'll continue on and we'll get the video started. Enjoy this one again. Please hit that smash that like. Hit up Hyde Motor Works, guys. Once again, if you need reliable supercharging needs, reliable supercharging performance, Hyde Motor Works. It took a lot of time to get them produced. These are basically a prototype kit. They finally got produced and shipped out. As far as I know, this is one of five. And there's not a lot of them in America, and there's not a lot of them on a wide body BMW. So, this kit is going to consist of everything here on the left hand table. You're going to get a brand new serpentine belt, a bracket for the back half of the supercharger. You're going to get some dummy manifold plates. So, that one is for the out on the, uh, from the supercharger. That dummy plate is for the back. You're going to get two new pulleys. These are the two dummies for the throttle body. This is the main plate that's going to go around the alternator. You'll have to excuse, there was some ghosting that occurred when they printed the label. That's a whole other thing that went on with UPS and the way that they were wrapped and packed and handled and shipping. And That's a whole other thing. We'll talk about that at the end of the video and what UPS put me through in getting this package. And It was pretty beat up by the time it came. There's some touch-up paint that I've had to do. To make it happen but after the main bracket you'll have the uh, rear dummy to come off the back of the supercharger it's actually going to stack onto that plate over there and then uh, various bolts and nuts and spacers that are going to come along with the kit to make sure it all bolts up nicely now the kit does not come with the m62 supercharger you're going to need to source this for yourself uh, i got mine locally off of uh, the marketplace and uh, it was really cheap, really good condition, doesn't need to be rebuilt. You're going to want to make sure that you get a good condition one that doesn't need to be rebuilt. Listen to it, make sure it's got no play in it. There should be no lashing. When you go like this, everything should move. There shouldn't be any play in the, uh, in the, in the uh, pulley itself. Um, past that, uh, it's pretty simple. A lot of these plates, like this main plate, is going to basically dummy up onto there. Uh, this other plate in the end is going to dummy to the back, back here. And then you're going to, you know, send that out to your uh, air filter and or uh, intercooler. In my case, we're going to go directly to the throttle body for this first pulley. Uh, this is the stock pulley system on the M62 short snout. These are going to come off the Mercedes compressors, uh, the Thunderbirds uh, from Ford. And they come in two different versions. The Ford one is a long snout version most of the time, I believe, in which the snout is going to go from here to here. It's a long piece, about eight or nine inches, that you have to actually cut down. It can work. If you can't find one and that's all you can source for cheap, there is videos that you can watch on how to cut them down and make them work. But I suggest if you can get your hands on a short snout, just go ahead and grab a short snout and uh, save yourself some trouble. Like I said, this kit is designed to go directly from the supercharger to the intake. At full blast, this thing is supposed to produce like 4 PSI, so not a lot of heat that needs to be cooled down to compress the air any further. Even if we did cool it down, we're really not going to get much more air in there because there's not a lot, you know, you're only pushing 3 to 4 at maximum RPM anyways. But Hyde Motor Works is producing a smaller pulley, which is going to basically make this thing spin faster and push more air up to 9 PSI. Uh, when we do that, we will reroute it and we will eventually go over to an inner cooler. Um, past that, uh, there's some instructions that are going to come online. I printed mine out. Pretty straightforward installation on these guys. Hyde Motorworks has kind of engineered everything. Obviously, I haven't bolted it up yet, and that'll be the next part of the series. Uh, I'm going to go over how this all bolts up, how that's going to push, and what else needs to be done. Now, on the other side of the table here, we've got a couple other things that are going to be needed to make this supercharge happen. So, to start off with, obviously, a boost gauge. We need to know what kind of PSI we're pushing so that we can adjust the tune. Uh, this boost gauge is from Glowshift. I have a Glowshift AFR, air fuel ratio, uh, already in the car with a wide band. So, this is going to plug right up to it and allow me to data log directly from that wideband. After that, we have the uh, DECA 60 pound injectors. As we're throwing more air into the engine, we need to throw more fuel. The stock greenhead Bosches won't keep up. Uh, these 60 pounds will eventually allow me to push E85 if I wanna go there as well for flex fuel. 
And then we just have some simple clips. These are the clips that actually hold the injectors in. They're really easy to lose, really easy to like break and drop down in the engine and then you're screwed because they won't stay on if you don't have these clips. So I ordered some extra ones. Uh, from when I changed my injectors a while ago, I learned that lesson. Another big part of this is gonna be this bad boy right here. This is the Brimmy 802 math. Um, excuse me, it might be 803, 803 math. Uh, this is a three and a half inch math that's usually found on the Porsches. Uh, this is going to allow for more airflow and a more precise reading of said airflow. So a lot of the tuners that I've seen and worked with like this math. It's a pretty universal math for most people. So um, a lot of the, the amount of air passing through it and the air pressure has already been kind of figured out by a lot of people. So uh, all the information is just kind of like an off the shelf kind of thing to go to. You'll need some special silicone which is in the mail for me. I'll do that as part of another video too on when we actually do the piping for the induction. I ordered a lot of Mishimoto silicone parts. You'll have to have an upstep from three and a half down to three inches down to your normal intake to get this installed, but all that'll come in the next video. Uh, I also have an aluminum thermostat housing um, here. These are really super cheap. I, I don't think it was more than $20 um, to get these ordered and uh, they replace the plastic one that you have. Really good idea. I already replaced with a lower temperature thermostat, so I might as well. I didn't have this part in the time. It was back ordered at the time. I wish I would have done it at the same time, but you know what they say, you go back in there. So I'm gonna, I have a race uh, Mishimoto low temperature thermostat currently. I'll pull that back out, recycle it, put it into this uh, aluminum housing. Uh, normally I wouldn't recommend that you, rec that you recycle your thermostat, but mine probably has less than 100 miles on it. Uh, I did the job not too long ago, and I haven't put that many miles on the BMW, so I'm just going to switch to this one. Uh, new. I'm putting all new O-rings, of course, but I will recycle the thermostat. I also have a temperature gauge, which I'm installing just for my purposes of being able to get more readings. Just a stock Bosch uh, temperature gauge that you can get for the BMWs. Along the way, we are also going to be deleting the EGR valve, uh, or the EGR, P sorry, PCV valves system for the BMW, I know I'm still not getting that right, but uh, the essentially the stock catch can on the M52, um, it's directly underneath your intake, it looks like an ice cream cone kind of. Uh, we're gonna replace that one with an aftermarket catch can and it's a three-way catch can that's gonna allow us to drain out of the bottom here. There's a little uh, Allen wrench screw that we can undo to give us a drain port. We'll eventually hook up a toggled drain port, which will allow us to just kind of freely drain the crap that's caught in the catch can back down to the oil pan and then we'll change our oil. So I prefer not to run open all the time and just have all that crap recycling back down into your oil system. I'll have my catch can and then rather than having to like completely unbuckle my catch can when it gets full, you know, you have the little dipsticks on them. Uh, and anybody who's ever looked inside a dip, uh, catch can knows that this stuff comes out like milky, oily, looks like water in your oil, it's all crazy. But So when this fills up, I will just go ahead and uh, either have a separate dump, I don't know if I'm going to, I'm probably going to run this line directly back down to the oil pan, there's a stock inlet at the bottom of the dipstick, and I'll probably just flush the catch can directly into the oil, and that'll give me a reason to also change the oil at that time too, so... I'll just go ahead and flush out the catch can, change my oil like normal, and move on. One of the last few pieces that we have, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we have. Like I said, we have AFRs in the car, is the Boost Monkey uh, plate for the SAP Delete, or Secondary Air Pump. The Secondary Air Pump basically recycles a little bit of hot air from the exhaust back into the intake, uh, during startup and during cold starts to kind of give your engine a little bit warmer air to work with. I live west coast. It doesn't ever get cold enough that I really care. Uh, I might experience some rough idles while the car is warming up, but uh, that's something I'll just live with. East coast, you might have some rough cold starts, some rough idles if you get some cold air in there, but it's just kind of, it's what you do. You know, you can't have the secondary air pump if you're going to have force induction. So that's going to kind of put everything together at the end of the video here. I'll put up a couple parts, lists, and diagrams, uh, things that I recommend that you get a hold of before you start this project. There will be some links for the Hyde Motor Work project, and Hyde Motor Works is providing a link for the first 
uh, 20 or 25 purchases will get a discount for their uh, supercharged kits, the version 3s that they have coming out, uh, especially if anybody wants to repeat the same kit. There'll be a link on the channel below, and uh, this will be the first part of the series, and the next part we'll go through and kind of diagram up, and we'll put this together a little bit farther, a little bit more complete, start looking at the inside of the BMW and what we're going to have to take off, what we're going to remove, what we're going to deal with to get all this together. And then also discuss Castle Performance, who stepped up to the plate here. Um, some of you may or may not know that we are currently tuned with RK Tunes. Uh, they've done a great job. I've never had a complaint on my current tune. Uh, when I brought this project up to them, they, uh, they kind of backed off and said that they didn't want to do it. So I don't know if it was something they weren't concerned with or didn't have any faith in or didn't think that they could properly do, but... Either way, Castle Performance has stepped to the plate for us. They're going to provide a tune for us here and uh, also some, some opportunities and some links for you guys as well. And so stay tuned for the next videos as we continue this build and push forward and try to shoot to break over 300 with uh, stock internals and pretty much a, a, just a regular M52B single Vanos. M52. Remember to hit that subscribe so you guys see when the next video comes out. It's going to be a couple weeks in between videos as we get this build pushed and finished. Uh, like I said, we are still waiting on a couple parts. We got some Mishimoto silicone coming in. We have a couple of... There's a bolt that was missing in shipping. Yeah, that was another thing. So UPS hit me with some unexpected brokerage fees and really damaged my box. Everything was strewn about inside the box. We think that maybe at some point it might have even been opened by customs. But there's some touch-ups, so like you'll see this black bar across here. That's actually my touch-up. That entire thing was marred up. There's a couple other little spots here and there on some of my manifolds that got some damage on them that I had to touch up as well. Nothing to break the bank about, but it wasn't anything that was, you know, well handled. Uh, but it did have to ship from the UK all the way over here. So we will uh, continue forward and we'll continue to talk about how some of this works and how a supercharger begins to push air into your vehicle. And as some of these blades start to spin around and generate pressured air and they and they speed air up as it moves into your intake. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Hit that bell, hit that like, smash, blah, blah, blah. You know the deal. So show your support for the 805 and your boy. Thanks, guys.